Most rock and metal fans know that there's basically an infinite number of subgenres that fall under each umbrella. While a lot of labels can be easily described by their sound, like how thrash is classified by its speed and grunge is a fusion of punk rock and metal, there's one that seems to be perplexing to many people. Butt rock. Throughout the course of this video, we'll explain where the term butt rock came from, what it means, what it looks like, and which bands fall under the category. So stay tuned to see if your favorite artist has been given the label. <laughs> Plus, if you stick around until the end, we'll tell you which new artist is being hailed by major publications as the future of butt rock. Stop calling it butt rock. Some of us don't like that it's called butt rock. Being called butt rock isn't a bad thing and we aren't here to shame anyone. You've probably heard the term before because it's often used to describe some pretty big names in the rock genre. So what is butt rock and why is it called that? As with anything else in music history, the butt rock subgenre has an origin story. The Houston Press once wrote that the term was coined by a radio station who promoted themselves as being rock, nothing but rock. People, of course, played around with the saying and started calling it nothing but rock, adding a second T to the word but. After the popularity of Seattle grunge lost its momentum in the mid-90s, heavy music splintered off into two separate categories. New Metal, which featured bands such as Korn, Slipknot, and Limp Bizkit, and Post Grunge, which Bush, Candlebox, and Collective Soul fell under. These groups were scrutinized for emulating the sound of grunge and capitalizing on its success, but over the next few years, Post Grunge evolved and a new wave of rock bands rose to popularity. The Butt Rock Bands. I'm talking about Stained, I'm talking about Hinder, I'm talking about Maud, Portal of Maud. While these new bands played loud, angsty, hard rock and often wrote about how sad they were, the musicality wasn't exactly up to par with that of Jerry Cantrell and Kim Thiel. The lyrics weren't as complex as those by Eddie Vedder and Chris Cornell. Songs became more formulaic and simplified, and guitar riffs became very basic. Many butt rock musicians cite Kurt Cobain as one of their biggest influences because he knew how to make rock music sound poppy and pop sells. You know, Kurt, Kurt described the, the, the Nirvana songs as, as nursery rhymes with heavy guitars, basically. So I think whenever you take a genre of music and you make it catchy and you make it something that you, is easily memorable and you, you know, it gets stuck in your head, that's how you elevate it from, from underground to mainstream. The website Hair and Flannel defines butt rock as a subgenre of rock and roll and hard rock music that is lyrically devoid of artistic merit and oftentimes reduced in melodic complexity. And they added that the subgenre actually peaked in 2005 when Nickelback released the song Photograph from their album All the Right Reasons. Every time I do, it makes me laugh. So which bands are considered butt rock and why? For starters, Nickelback were given a lot of shit as they became successful in the early 2000s because of their structured style of songwriting, which almost always guaranteed that they'd have success on the radio. Creed, on the other hand, were mainly criticized because of Scott Stapp's voice, which many compared to Eddie Vedder. Buck Cherry's biggest hit, Crazy Bitch, is basically a stripper song reminiscent of 80s cock rock anthems, Pour Some Sugar On Me and Girls, Girls, Girls. Hey, crazy bitch, but you're so good on my top of it. Stained, Shine Down, Puddle of Mud, Hinder, Breaking Benjamin, Disturbed, Trapped, and Seether are some other big names that fall into the category of 2000s butt rock. For all the reasons that we already mentioned, in addition to the fact that they're mostly just enjoyable to listen to. Since we just mentioned butt rock's distant cousin cock rock, we want to quickly address what the difference is. Cock rock generally focuses on male sexuality, so a lot of the 80s hair bands such as Motley Crue, Def Leppard, Warren, and Whitesnake would be considered a cock rock. Seriously though, David Coverdale named the band Whitesnake after his you get the idea. And the thing about a lot of trouser snakes is their hair can get really out of control. So guys, if your little rocker is getting lost in the weeds, I'd like to recommend Manscaped, the sponsor of this video. Manscaped is the best in below the waist grooming. It offers precision engineered tools for your family jewels. Guys, you may not think it's important to keep things smooth down there, but trust me, it is. And whoever you're with does care, even if they say they don't. If you don't quite know where to start, then the Performance Package 4.0 by Manscaped may just be the thing for you. Inside this package, you'll find their Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer, Weed Whacker Ear and Nose Hair Trimmer, Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant, Crop Reviver Toner, Performance Boxer Briefs, and a travel bag to hold the goodies. First off, the Lawnmower 4.0. This trimmer is the future of grooming and, dare I say, the greatest ball trimmer ever. It's so good, I'm thinking of getting one for myself. Their fourth generation trimmer features a cutting edge ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents thanks to their advanced skin safe technology. 
The lawnmower 4.0 is waterproof and also has a 4000K LED spotlight for a more precise shave. Say goodbye to the hairy mess on the bathroom floor and sink. The Performance Package 4.0 also includes the Weed Whacker nose hair and ear hair trimmer, which is also waterproof and provides proprietary skin safe technology, which helps reduce nicks, snags, and tugs in those delicate nose holes. Their Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant and Crop Reviver Ball Toner is the best hygiene routine you need for your balls. It's like a skincare routine, but for your goodies down there. Manscaped even threw in two free gifts to their Performance Package 4.0 the Manscaped boxers, and the Shed travel bag. Go to manscaped.com and get 20% off and free shipping with this code. Unlock your confidence and always use the right tools for the job with Manscaped. Now, back to the butt rock. The genre doesn't just have a sound. Like all other styles of music, it also has a pretty signature look. You can usually tell when someone is a butt rock musician or a fan by the way they dress. Some staple pieces that stand out are open dress shirts, sleeveless flannels, Ed Hardy or Affliction graphic tees, decorated jeans, styled hair, piercings, tattoos, especially tribal tattoos, and so on. Since a lot of the artists we've mentioned throughout this video formed in the late 90s and early 2000s, many of them still tour and make music today. So butt rock is still technically alive and well. Despite the hate that Nickelback still get, they've sold over 50 million albums worldwide throughout their career so far. Never made it as a wise man. Woo! Why do people not like Nickelback? I feel like Nickelback gets way too much shit. Stain played a highly anticipated reunion show in 2019 at the Louder Than Life Festival and have been performing and working on a new album ever since. Shinedown just scored their 20th number one single on the active rock charts. So the demand for butt rock is obviously still there. But are there any new butt rock artists out there? The New Yorker thinks that Hardy may be the genre's saving grace. Hardy started his career as a songwriter in Nashville and composed songs for a lot of really popular country artists such as Florida Georgia Line, Thomas Rhett, and Morgan Wallen. But now he's creating his own music, and his most recent album, The Mockingbird and the Crow, served as a crossover between country and rock, with the first half of it being country and the latter half being rock. Wall to wall and I still ain't sold out. He told The New Yorker that some of his favorite bands to listen to growing up were Puddle of Mud, System of a Down, and Linkin Park. Although he's found more success in the country world, some of his songs have landed on the rock charts, and he seems to genuinely enjoy getting to have the best of both worlds. Listen, we're not insulting any bands who've learned to make successful music, nor are we downplaying the talent or the creativity of any of these musicians. And most importantly, we're not judging anyone who's a butt rock fan. You like what you like, and you should be proud of it. People love butts!